2020 really went by quickly and after testing hundreds of items, 10 items really stood out. If you're looking for a high quality impact bit, the Milwaukee stood out as a clear number one out of 10 different brands tested. I absolutely love it when manufacturers make bold claims when it comes to how they market their products. For example, Milwaukee claims to last up to 50 times longer than the competition, which is a pretty bold claim. I tested all the bits and the Milwaukee was only one of four brands with a Mohs hardness of seven. Milwaukee claims their custom alloy 76 steel is engineered to extend the bit life. To test this claim, I drove in a thousand four inch drywall screws, 100 per brand, into 4x4 pressure treated lumber. The Milwaukee bit showed virtually no wear on the flutes. Most of the other brands, such as the Craftsman, showed quite a bit of visible wear. Of course, the appearance of wear is pretty subjective. So to test performance, I applied 27 pounds of downward force on the bits during the cam out test. Using a digital torque meter, I measured the amount of torque required for both the new as well as the used bits to experience cam out. The new Milwaukee did a great job at 91 inch pounds. What's more impressive is that the Milwaukee bit delivered 84 inch pounds, which is only a loss of seven inch pounds after driving 100 screws. The Milwaukee's performance only declined 7.7% compared to the other nine brands, all experiencing a performance loss of over 20%. Wear from normal use is one thing, but what about maximum strength? To test this, 200 pounds of downward force was applied to the bit to prevent it from camming out during the test. It took a very impressive 157 inch pounds to break the Milwaukee bit. Only one other brand, the Wea brand, was equally strong. Finally, I used the Milwaukee to remove 997 drywall screws from the 4x4s and it held up incredibly well, showing very little wear. Another top 10 product for 2020 is the DeWalt socket adapter. A high quality impact driver can easily destroy socket adapters that just aren't up to the task. DeWalt claims their socket adapter can be used in impact drivers that produce up to 2,000 inch pounds of torque. Pretty impressive claim. In the first test, I used a torque adapter to measure the amount of torque required to break each adapter. The DeWalt did very well finishing number three of 12. Of course, the real test is how these impact adapters hold up under impact. DeWalt claims their socket adapter is impact ready and that proved to be true as it pegged the needle on the clamp load tester before finally breaking at 2000 PSI. Very impressive. The DeWalt came out on top in this test with the closest competitor trailing the DeWalt by 125 PSI. The Milwaukee Fuel Impact Driver definitely earned its position as a top 10 product. Not only did the Milwaukee cost a lot less than some of the competition, it totally dominated in performance testing. That's also pretty impressive when you consider that it's also more compact than most of the other brands. It came out on top in the no-load RPM test at nearly 3600. In forward rotation, it totally dominated the max torque test, making 1600 PSI on the clamp load tester, while the number two brand finished 150 PSI lower. In reverse rotation, the Milwaukee did even better at 1,750 PSI. Very impressive. The Milwaukee finished ahead of DeWalt by 75 PSI. To really put the brands to the test, the impact drivers drove in a half inch lag bolts in the railroad ties. The Milwaukee was by far the fastest of all the brands tested, finishing the job in just over 30 seconds. Meanwhile, one of the other brands went up in smoke and didn't survive the test. In the head-to-head -head grudge match, the Milwaukee easily outperformed all the other brands, easily stopping their momentum and then reversing their direction. The Milwaukee also beat all the competition in a side-by-side -side test, removing lug nuts. After all the testing was complete, I took apart the impact drivers to look at the internals. Of all the brushless tools, the Milwaukee not only makes the most RPM, but it also has the heaviest hammer. So it definitely makes sense that it makes the most torque. The rocket socket rounded nut and bolt extractor was the next product to make the list. There's nothing like a rounded nut or bolt to delay finishing a project, but fortunately the rocket socket rounded nut and bolt extractor did a terrific job. Not only did it perform well, but it also cost less than some of the more expensive competition. The reverse spiral flutes on a rocket socket did a great job gripping and removing the completely rounded bolt. It's also designed to be used with impact tools. In the second test, the bolts that I used for testing the extractors were completely seized. I sprayed penetrating fluid on the bolt just to make things more challenging. The point of this test was to see if the extractor is actually stronger than the bolt. The rocket socket did a terrific job outlasting the bolt and didn't show any visible wear. Unfortunately, not all the extractors survived this test. Since this test, I've been doing a much better job at using safety glasses. Speaking of safety glasses, the Carhartt Carbondale safety glasses did an amazing job providing protection and at a very affordable price of around $11. The anti-fog lenses also did a great job. In the first test, a steel ball traveling at 238 miles per hour totally destroyed the sunglasses lens. The lens in another set of sunglasses became totally detached, definitely not good. Fortunately, the Carhartt Carbondale blocked the steel ball and the lens only experienced very minor cosmetic damage. If you're wearing regular sunglasses, getting hit with a steel rod will definitely run your day. However, the Carhartt did a terrific job at providing protection and only experienced minor damage. So what about fit and comfort? This is pretty subjective, but the Carhartts fit Billy Ray very well, and he had to go into full thrash mode to shake loose the Carhartts.
In many applications, a step bet can really add a tremendous amount of benefit if you're using a high quality product like the DeWalt. While it is one of the more expensive brands tested, it proved to be worth the extra cost. In the first test, I added a wheel to the drill press arms and then a rope and weights to apply 52 pounds of downward force. All 13 brands competed to see which brand was the fastest at drilling through mild steel. Some of the brands really struggled needing over a minute for this task, but the DeWalt drilled through the steel in only 9 seconds. It easily outperformed all the other brands. The step bits were then tested on high carbon steel, this time to see how far and how fast they could drill. The steel was so hard that several brands couldn't even drill through the first level. The DeWalt dominated this test and didn't stop until the entire bit drilled through the steel in only 15 seconds. As a formerly disappointed step bit user, watching the DeWalt shred the medium hardness steel in only 15 seconds was rather enjoyable. Only three brands were able to make it all the way through and none of them came close to the DeWalt's 15 second time. In the final test, all the brands attempted to drill through AR400 steel which is used as armor plating. Even with over 200 pounds of downward force, most of the brands were not able to drill through the steel and experienced quite a bit of wear and tear to the chisel, leading edge, and flutes. Once again, the DeWalt came out on top at only 20 seconds. Only four step bits were able to complete this test. The next closest competitor took six seconds longer. The DeWalt held up really well with very minor wear to the chisel and leading edge. The Drill Doctor 750X also made the list. I used to have a lot of very dull twist drill bits laying around the shop before I discovered the really fast and high quality drill bit sharpener, the Drill Doctor 750X. I used really chewed up drill bits for the first test. Setup was really simple. First insert the bit into the chuck and tighten the chuck just enough to allow the bit to move freely. Then place the chuck inside the alignment port to set the angle to 118 or 135 degrees. Once things are set up, simply insert the chuck into the sharpening port and turn the chuck clockwise until the sharpening is finished. Setup and sharpening only took two minutes, making it the fastest drill bit sharpener tested. I really like being able to make split point drill bits too. Making split point bits does take a little bit longer, but it's worth the effort. The drill bit on the left has a split point and the one on the right has a standard point. Just like the step bit testing, I once again used the drill press to apply an equal amount of downward force to test the performance of each of the sharpened twist drill bits. The drill bits sharpened by the drill doctor made quick work of drilling through the half inch mild steel. The standard point 118 degree drill bit needed a minute and 36 seconds. The 135 degree split point was even faster at a minute and 21 seconds. The Lansky knife sharpener easily made the list of top 10 products. At a price of around $70, it's very affordable for a sharpening system compared to some of the other brands that cost up to $900 for the Wicked Edge system. What's also very nice is that it doesn't take up a lot of storage space. To test the sharpness of the knives, I bought a knife sharpness tester. I also bought brand new high carbon stainless steel chef's knives for the testing. The knife sharpness tester came with a sharpness chart. The brand new chef's knives were very sharp. In fact, they were as sharp as a utility knife blade with a sharpness of 145. To dull the knives equally, I built a test rig. All of the knives had an equal amount of weight on top of them and made five passes over an aluminum pipe. A look at the dulled knife blade under the microscope showed quite a bit of damage. I once again tested the sharpness of the dulled knife and it was almost as dull as a butter knife at 1825. Setting up the Lansky is extremely quick and it's also very easy to use. After sharpening, the knife edge looks amazing. What's even more impressive is that the Lansky sharpened the knife edge to 110 which is sharper than the knife when it was new. What's also very impressive is it did just about as well as the $900 knife sharpener which did slightly better at 100. Knives are oftentimes used on cutting boards which can quickly dull a knife blade. To test knife edge durability, all the sharpened knives made 30 passes over a piece of wood. After all the knives made 30 passes, I tested the sharpness of the knives again. The Lansky started out at 110 and did a great job maintaining a sharp edge at 185 and outperforming several far more expensive brands. For around $70, the Lansky is a great value and a great sharpening system that can allow just about anyone to form a sharp and durable knife edge. The Bosch Icon definitely earned a place on the list. If you're buying a set of windshield wipers, you probably care about durability just about as much as performance. So before testing the windshield wipers, all the windshield wipers experienced a full year of outdoor weather and UV exposure. Even after a year of UV exposure, the Bosch Icon looked nearly as good as new and only made a very small amount of squeaking. To provide a realistic test, I added a water pump, generator, and water tank to the back of a pickup truck. I added a sprayer to the front of the truck and a power switch to the inside of the truck. I tested all the wipers at 55 miles per hour. While all the other brands experienced some water spillover over the edge of the blade, the Bosch Icon did by far the best at managing the water and didn't experience any spillover. In extremely heavy rain conditions, traffic oftentimes comes to a near stop. Once again, the Bosch Icon stood out. It experienced very minimal streaking and water spillover compared to the other brands. The Renegade Hybrid brush blade made the list after some really challenging testing. 
At a price of only $15, Renegade Hybrid costs less than most of the other brands and outperformed them as well. The Renegade Hybrid has carbide teeth, which really helped with durability. The Renegade cut through a one inch sapling like a hot knife through butter without losing much speed. The Renegade did lose a little bit of speed on the two inch sapling, but it cut through the sapling in less than a second. On a three and a half inch sapling, it lost quite a bit of speed, but it still cut through the tree in only seven seconds. To test durability, the blades came in contact with a piece of galvanized pipe. Most of the blades hit the pipe and then bounced off of it and experienced quite a bit of damage. The Renegade cut through the metal pipe like a hot knife through butter and only experienced minor damage to a couple of teeth. The durability testing also included coming into contact with the cinder block. In the final test, the blades were once again used on the same tree to see how well they performed. The Renegade blade originally cut through the two inch tree in under a second. It now needed about four seconds. Four seconds to cut through a two inch tree is still pretty good and better than all the other brands. The next fastest brand needed nearly twice as long, so the Renegade definitely earned its place in the top 10. While it didn't make the top 10 list, this $30 fake Makita, also known as Cousin Eddie, definitely deserves an honorable mention. It competed against the real Makita, which cost $138 or over $100 more. Both brands weighed and even looked nearly identical, but there was definitely a pretty big difference in performance. The real Makita outperformed Cousin Eddie in almost every test. On the clamp load tester, Cousin Eddie made 1,300 PSI. The Makita did quite a bit better at 2,050 PSI. In the side-by-side -side testing, the Makita once again outperformed Cousin Eddie. In the head-to-head -head grudge match, once again, the Makita won against Cousin Eddie. But Cousin Eddie really excelled in the last test, which is the 10-foot drop test. While Cousin Eddie may not work faster than Makita, it definitely has better dance moves. The Makita definitely seems a little stiff compared to Cousin Eddie. There's definitely no trigger delay with Cousin Eddie on the dance floor. Very impressive moves. If you're interested in seeing the complete video, I have a list of the videos as well as a link to each one of those in the video description. Also, for the year 2021, we have a lot of projects lined up, but I'm looking for more video ideas. So if you have any video ideas, I hope you take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.